What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? Sir? The most you ever lost on a coin toss. Come on in. My name's Dick Gross, and I'll be teaching the course Fat Chance with my good friend and, and colleague of many years, Joe Harris. This course started in some sense around 12 years ago, and it started as a lot of things do in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I was asked for the gazillionth time what I do, and when I told the person who was asking me that I was a mathematician, there was this a reaction I'm very familiar with, which is that their face fell, and the next words out of their mouth was, I used to like math, and then I had a bad experience in high school. Those are the students we wanted to address. We start off with things you can calculate exactly. So how many of all the bridge hands, you're, you're, all the poker hands you're deal, dealt, how many will be straight flushes? And how many will be flushes? And how many will have three of a kind? And so you can see that the valuations that are placed on poker hands are reasonable. But then, when you try to get into more sophisticated analysis, what does it mean that this poll has a margin of 5% of error? How likely will it be that the Big Poppy will go 10 games without a hit? That, that's a much more difficult problem in probability, and we want to introduce students to those kind of questions, too. In this course, we're going to teach a lot of the math that uh, you'll come across in your daily life, reading the newspaper, just making decisions as you go about your day. Uh, and this is going to be a really valuable skill, and hopefully it'll be something that sticks with students for a long time. For me, at least, this decision was really cemented during the 2008 election. And it just drove me crazy, because every day you'd go be watching the news or reading the news. And, you know, I saw the same person reading the news, quoting two different polls on the same issue, each of which had a margin of error of 3%, but the results were more than 6% apart. And I thought, does this ever sink in that people are, are, what they're saying makes no literal sense? Do they even know what it means to say that a given poll has a margin of error of plus or minus 3%? And it, gave, it was very clear that they didn't. And we thought, okay, people coming out of Harvard should know this. This is part of what you need to know if you're going to process this kind of information in real life. And the reality is that every day we make decisions that are based on incomplete information. We have to decide whether to take an umbrella when we go out of the house in the morning. We have to estimate the chance that it's gonna rain. And on that's a very small scale, on a much larger scale, we have to decide how much effort do we need to put into something like combating global warming? How serious a threat is it? And again, we have to evaluate the significance of information that's not absolute. We don't know what's going on. We make guesses based on probability and statistical inference. And all the more reason then it's important that we understand what those tools are and how we use them.